Hello and welcome to Inaccuracies of Pulse Oximeter Readings. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. Let's talk a little bit about pulse oximetry. And as you may know from one of my other videos, pulse oximetry is a way that we are able to use a peripheral device to monitor how much oxygen is in the blood. So some facts about pulse oximetry. First of all, it is peripheral, so it may not indicate for us about central hypoxemia because it's done peripherally. It relies on red light, so room light can interfere with our readings, and it reads everything that's bound to hemoglobin, including carbon monoxide, and that can give us inaccurate readings. Our SPO2, that's what we get with our pulse ox, is different than our SAO2. SAO2 is a saturation of arterial oxygen, which is measured by a blood gas. Well, let's take a look at how a pulse oximeter works. So this being a finger here, and you can see the blood supply going through the finger and we have our capillary bed out there and then we have our device. Our device is going to have a light on one side so it's an infrared light on one side and then we're also going to have a photo detector on the other side of the finger and it's going to measure how much of that red light is taken up by the blood that is circulating at the, t at the fingertip. So that is how our pulse ox is working. Now let's take a look at this in terms of how our pulse ox may be affected in different patient populations. So if we're assuming we have a red light here and we have fairly light skinned patient, then we would anticipate we could still see that reddish light coming through the skin. However, let's change the pigmentation a little bit and you can see the color of that red is starting to change along with the pigmentation and even darker yet and we're seeing the color is changing even more with that pigmentation. And what this does is then it confuses our pulse ox and then our pulse ox is not able to pick up a very accurate reading of the patient's oxygen level in the bloodstream. So in a study that was done recently here, we looked at a SAO2 versus SPO2 in different pa patient populations looking for hidden hypoxemia. Hidden hypoxemia is hypoxemia. In other words, we have an oxygen level saturation less than 88% in patients where our pulse ox is saying that we have an oxygen saturation of greater than 92%. The SAO2, again, is the amount of saturated oxygen that is measured in the blood. This is done, again, by a blood gas. So this is a lab test. It's actually measuring what's in the blood versus our pulse ox, the SPO2, which is measuring how much blood, and it's doing this by way of that light going through the finger. So we've got those problems that could occur with our SPO2. It doesn't mean they're all inaccurate. It just means that we can run into problems. We have to be aware of them so that if what we're seeing with the patient isn't matching up with what we're seeing with our device, then we have to be able to use some concern. So what was found was that there was significant arterial hypoxemia. In non-white patients, up to 17% had significant arterial hypoxemia when the pulse ox was reading that the patient was above 92%. In white patients, only up to 6% had significant arterial hypoxemia. So you can see there's a significant difference between our white patients, our Caucasian patients, and our non-Caucasian patients in how well the pulse ox is working. Now, let's take a look at that in terms of critical organ dysfunction. So this is a very important component here as well. About 15% of our white patients had critical organ dysfunction as a result of this misunderstanding or the result of this miscommunication that was done by the pulse ox, whereas in non-white patients that was 21%. So a significant difference then in critical organ dysfunction as a result of this blood gas measuring inaccurately. Here's our reference. 
So Dr. Wong and colleagues, the analysis of discrepancies between pulse oximetry and arterial oxygen saturation measurements by race and ethnicity in association with organ dysfunction and mortality. This has been followed up by another study very recently in the Journal of Critical Care Medicine. Our recommendations are improve the technology to ensure accuracy. So these are the organizations that have performed or that have put out these uh, recommendations. The Society of Critical Care Medicine, American Association of Critical Care Nurses, the American College of Chest Physicians, and the American Thoracic Society. They've also recommended that we educate providers and consumers about inaccuracies that can occur with using a pulse oximeter. Thank you for joining me for Inaccuracies of Pulse Oximetry Readings. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, bye now.